Hi guys! Welcome to my knitting and crochet vlog where I spend some time each week talking about the finished objects and the works in progress that I've been working on lately. I am happy that you're here. My name is Mandy and I go by Mandy Vaughn Knits on Ravelry, YouTube, of course, and Instagram. So you can find me at any of those places. I love to craft. I have been crafting for a very long time. I've been crocheting since my son was born and I've been knitting since my daughter was born. So I guess overall not too long. My son is 13 and my daughter is 9. She just turned 9 last week so it's kind of getting used to calling her a 9 year old. But um, so yeah I guess it's not been that long but I do love crafting and even growing up I would love just hanging out with my aunts and learning about different cross stitch or sewing and all sorts of things so if that sounds like something you're interested in welcome and to anyone who is new or a returning subscriber welcome hi I'm glad that you're here I have two finished objects this week and they are both crochet, which is kind of a new turn on recent events. Lately I've been knitting more than crocheting and now all of a sudden I've got two crochet finished objects done. So if you watched last week's video, you noticed that I was working on a dress for my daughter and I love this dress and it's super cute. I did finish it. So I used a Shepshi's Whirl Cake and a, a corresponding Whirlette color. So the Whirl comes in a cake and it has around 1100 yards, meters, yards, I think it's yards. And the Whirlette has corresponding colors to the Whirl Cake and it's just a standard fingering weight, so like 330-ish. Anyways, this is what I did with the whirl that I had. So you can see from the bottom that I, this, so let me start from the beginning. I crocheted a size nine for her, which is fitting because she's nine years old. So the neck part is a little loose on her and I'm wondering if I should reinforce it with ribbon. And I probably should and I probably will, but for right now she's really loving it and I'm going to put in some video here which is going to show her twirling around in it and just generally being happy. And after that, I'll add some pictures of her just wearing it. Now, it's super cute and I was really happy with how the waist fits. And naturally, when you twirl in this, because it has, the pattern lets you choose between, I think four, six, eight or 10 points at the bottom of the skirt. And I chose 10, you know, for maximum twirlage. Well, it definitely, like, earlier today she was wearing this and she kept spinning around in circles and she looks at me and she goes, Mom, it's like a flower blooming. And she's right. It, it does look like that when she spins. If I had to do this over again, I would cast on less stitches for the neckline. And I would even, no, I don't want to say that I would add less stitches to the body in general because on her, when she's wearing the dress, there's a little bit of grab right here, like a little bit of extra fabric, but I really want that there because the dress is long on her. So it is past her knees. It's probably mid shin. So she's got quite a bit of wear, wear. She can have quite a bit of wear from this. And she really did 
mention over and over again actually that it's super soft and it's super comfortable and she really liked it so I think that's a win and if you've seen any of the previous podcasts where I've knit the star blanket, oh, not knit, I've crocheted the star blanket, the, uh, the bottom of this dress is very much like this. So after you establish the pattern, it's mindless. However, I will say once you get down to the very bottom, it takes forever for a row. So it does seem like it goes on forever and ever, but I think it's worth it. I think that's just so pretty. I really love how it um, fades into the pink. I will say this. So the world that I used was this gray col this yeah, gray color up here. Now, if I knew what I know now, I would have not used the whirl gray color up top. I would have started immediately into the, um, I wouldn't have used the whirlette up here. I would have started immediately into the color changing whirlette. And then at the bottom, I see this color right here. I would have used the crush candy skein that I had. So that way it would have been less gray and more pinkish, but I still like it the way that it is. And this pattern was so super easy that I could see making it again. It The pattern comes in many, many different sizes for little girls. Um, and it's super easy to adjust and modify. It's more of like a, hey, this is what you do and work as many stitches as is going to fit the body that you're making it for. I think that even there are even adult sizes. So I love the color changes. I think that's really pretty. It was great to use this yarn, this whirl. This is the first time that I've ever used it. And my daughter is right. It's super soft. I was very impressed with it. I know that um, there are different cotton color changing yarns. I know that Hobie has their twister yarns. Uh, they have a bunch of like really bright and happy, I guess you would say, bright and happy colors. And I'm trying to think of who else makes some. I know there are tons more. You could even use like a, a surely there's some color changing light colored yarn that you could pick up like at Joann's or Michael's or something. But I really did love making this pattern and I loved finishing this dress. I, last week I had said I wasn't, I, I was pretty sure I was only going to get up to a certain color. I had just decided I'm going to get this done and I'm going to power through it. And I really did appreciate that because I've got so it is what? It's January 21st. I have so many ideas running in my head about what I want to make. Like, I want to make my mom her Irish gold cardigan. And I have all the yarn for that. I just need to cast it on. I've been putting off casting it on because it's going to be a long-term project. I mean, adult sweater, right? So I've been thinking, hey, I should get this dress done or this stuffy done or this hat done first because it'll be quicker. And that way, I I'll, even during like when I'm working, I'll always take the tasks that are easiest first and get those done. So that way, even if I get stuck on the hard ones, I always have something to say, hey, look, I at least accomplished this today. So that's always been like how my mind works. But anyways, so I have the Irish gold sweater that I want to make my mom. I have some color work hats that I really want to do. And I have like 14 muscle burrows that I want to make all in my head. And eventually I'm going to do it. 
it's just I have like this checklist in my head and I work like one thing at a time and check it off and then the other thing and check it off. At times, and I will show you examples of this right now, I do cast on or crochet on. What, what would be the term for casting on for crochet? Surely uh, chaining on. No, that doesn't sound very catchy. Anyways, at times I do uh, start more than one project for knitting and crochet. I try to keep one knit and one crochet project, but if I have something long-term knitting and I know it's going to take a while, I will cast on smaller, like bite-sized projects for knitting just so I can keep feeling like I'm getting something like I'm making progress on something because when you take like an adult say like a large sweater um and you're knitting on it and you can only knit like this much a day it's hard to see progress and it's hard to feel like like you're actually progressing with it so anyways I will talk about future plans and a new cast on, but I want to go through my finished objects and whips first. So if I don't, I think it was not last podcast, but the podcast before I had mentioned that my daughter had been asking for a stuffy. Now I'm not a good amigurumi maker. I give major props to all the people out there on Instagram and TikTok and they make these beautiful pieces and they look amazing and their faces are always right. And well, when I make amigurumis, it kind of always looks a little weird. It just does. Uh, I could probably, well, I should probably put some time and effort and practice into it to make them look better, but it's just not where my heart is, right? So whenever I do uh, an amigurumi, uh, depend, okay, it depends. Whenever I ha my daughter asks for an amigurumi that has a lot of teeny tiny pieces, I'm always like, ugh. But I do it because she asks nicely and I know she, she'd love it. So anyway, she was asking for a calico cat. Now, my daughter loves cats. But most of all, for whatever reason, and this has been since I think she was three or four, she's always loved calico cats. I, I, I mean, w we have two black cats and a long-tailed tiger cat. I don't know where, we, we've never had, I've never had a calico cat. It's just, she's watched before, she's sh growing up, and even now, she'll watch The Kitten Lady on YouTube, and I don't know if you've ever heard of her, but she is uh, someone that goes and rescues kittens, and she has a lot of videos on how to take care of cats, and so I think that's where she gets the calico love from. But, so, I cast, cast this on and crocheted this in about... A half of a day so now let me talk about this pattern because I mean it is cute it's exactly what she wanted right but see calicos have more than one color and they don't it's not like stripes they have splotches which means like intarsia crochet which is quite difficult for me Especially in such small spaces, I'm sure that if I was doing like some flat squared blankets, it would be easier for me. But like this was this this head and this body and these these feet were difficult. <laughs> but she's very pleased with it. So that's that's all that matters in the end. I I obviously obviously I see things that I could have done differently, but I think that it's okay. I don't. I don't have any desire to make picture-perfect, like, catalog-ready 
toys. Uh, there's nothing wrong with anyone who does. I mean, that's awesome. But like, it's just not in my heart. I, I'm more, I am more into making garments and hats than I am toys. But I will make a toy for my daughter every once in a while when she asks for it. So after I gave her this one, she goes to me and says, Mom, you can take a break or two, you can take a break for a day or two, and then can you make the all black cat? I think she's gonna have to wait like a month or two to get another one, but I'm glad that she likes it. And as soon as I gave it to her, she sat it right down next to her and proceeded to watch TV with it. So I think that's a good thing. But that pattern is one that I grabbed on Etsy and I really, I, I mean the pattern was great. It was very detailed. It would tell you when you needed to swap colors and just it gave so much step-by-step -step instructions that it was awesome. I held two strands of yarn double. So that would be why I believe I had the most issue. Now, I have a problem remembering this, and it seems like I forget it every single time I make an amigurumi. I should go for thinner weight yarn. Now, the yarn that I used for this was Shepsha's Scrumptious. So that is a DK weight yarn, and I held it double. Now, the pattern originally called for fingering weight yarn. It was fingering weight cotton yarn. So it was going to make about a three and a half inch stuffy. I doubled DK, and what I should have done was held DK weight single, and I believe it would have been fine. I think I would have had a little bit more it would have been a little bit more easy to crochet with only one strand instead of strands held double. And then, I mean, at the most, if I would have used one strand, I would have had three strands of yarn from the project at a time. But the way that I held it double, I had six strands of yarn at a time and it just got to be very overwhelming. <laughs> But anyways, I'm really super happy about it. It's cute. She needs whiskers. I'm not going to mention that though because I don't really want to add whiskers. So let me show you the my last, well no, let me show you my work in progress that you saw last week. So this is my muscle burrow. And I have an idea about this, right? So do you remember last week I was talking about, what was I talking about? I was talking about how I was swapping yarn, swapping yarn from the inside to the outside of the skein every two rows. So I'm doing that and I started thinking, I want to see how this pulls. So what I am going to do is I am going to knit half of it with the yarn alternating every two rows, and then I am going to knit the other half and just let it pool and just see where it ends up. I actually have another skein of yarn that's called Starry Nights, and it's from Blackbird Sycamore Yarns, and I am going to do the same thing with that hat. And I think that the Muscle Burrow is a great hat to try this process on, right? Because even if I'm not into the pooling and the pooling effect, I can just turn it inside out and wear the, the alternating rows side on the outside and then it's all perfect. But I really think it's cool to see how yarns pull up. I really love the Muscle Burrow pattern as a whole and I think that this hat really lends itself to being very creative on at least the inside of it. I mean, nobody ever has to see it if you don't want them to, right? But even so, I really think that this yarn is going to pull very pretty. And I love it. 
it's called Red Room. It is from Blackbird Sycamore Yarns, and this hat is for my son. Now, this will be more of a long-term project. Something that I grab every once in a while when I need some mindless stockinette, so you might not see that for a little bit. And you might not even see it until I'm halfway done with it. it it's just kind of how projects like that go for me. So now that I finished her dress, I've been thinking about what I'm going to cast on next. Now, I wonder if this is going to come out okay on screen. Probably not. So I'm going to put some pictures up here, but let's see if that will work a little bit. This is called the Bloomsbury Kids. It is by Svetlana Volkova. I hope I'm saying that right. Now, I love this pattern. I've made this pattern before and it's so pretty. This has de lace detail on both sleeves and then a lace panel down the back. I made this for my daughter and I made this for myself about two years ago, maybe, maybe three now. It's been a little bit, but I have the perfect yarn to make, to work with this, to work this in. Jeez, I'm tongue tied today. So the pattern is sizes six months to eight years. And this is just the kids version. version. They have an adult's version as well. And you use a 5.5 circular needle and you use worsted weight yarn. Now I was looking, so I am knitting the size eight years and I was looking at it and it looks like you need exactly how much yarn I have, which is a very happy accident. So I cast this on just this morning, so there's not going to be much to look at. I have the ribbing done and I am just starting to put my markers in for the lace and basically the increases. So this yarn should look slightly familiar. This is the yarn that I knit my See You There from Hohi Locatelli in. And I love this yarn and I had so much extra that I knew I needed to do something for my daughter in it. This is Pearly Haze from Hobie. And this yarn is viscose and wool. Yes, viscose and wool. It is a medium weight four. It comes in 50 gram uh, donuts. Donuts. I think that's what you call this put up. And it is 120 yards. The recommended needle is five millimeters or a six millimeter crochet hook. So this yarn is so soft and so squishy. And the thing that I like most about this yarn is when I knit my See You There, I really liked how it felt and we blocked it. And then it was like the softest thing ever. <laughs> so it went from being awesome to like super, super awesome. Now this is a commercial yarn, which makes it even more cool because I, uh, this is probably one of the nicest uh, commercial yarns that I've, I've used. And it is a chainette tube and it knits up amazingly. I loved knitting with this. And I actually, when I cast this on this morning, I immediately remembered how nice it is to knit with. It is so super smooth and the yarn isn't grabby at all. And it glides over your needles. Uh, that sounds weird, right? Like, We've all knit with yarns that might not be super comfortable to knit with, or maybe they grab your skin, or uh, they catch on themselves. This yarn doesn't do anything that I would consider I would consider annoying. So I was very happy to have run across it. In fact, after I use this and use a bunch of other yarn, I I'm trying to 
utilize some stash that I have um, because I'm, I've got, uh, I'll get into it later, but I have some heavier weight yarn and I'd like to work through it, but uh, I went on this mission last year, I think. I've had all this fingering weight yarn and I just, I wanted to get some heavier weight yarn. And now I'm finding that I need to go through the heavier weight yarn because one of the downsides of having heavier weight yarn is that it takes up more space. And that's not very good. So I have four, uh, what are they? Uh, the clear Loctite boxes. I have four of those. The storage boxes that are clear with the white caps and I put my yarn in those, but I would definitely like to be able to work through some of the, the at least the worsted weight sweater quantities that I have. And the, when I say sweater quantities, I mean there's some sweater quantities for my kids, mostly. So, but, and this is actually one of the one of the ideas I had to use up some of that yarn. Eventually, one day, when I clear out some of the yarn, I would love to get Pearly Haze in some, a different color. I think that they have like a darker, like a purple, or maybe it's like a darker red, but one of those, one of the darker colors. I do like the light pink though. And my daughter is super excited to wear this because she can wear sweaters, uh, she wears uniforms at school, and she can wear plain color sweaters over her uniform shirt, so she's definitely going to love this. But that is my main work in progress for right now, and then this is my I need stockinette knitting just because the day was really rough knitting. I, I'm sure you guys understand. You, you, you know what I mean, right? Sometimes you just need non-lace or thinky knitting. But I do have an idea of what I... I'm thinking that this week I'm going to cast on... Oh, I don't know if you guys hear that like the little chirping, but there's a red cardinal like in the tree right outside our window and it's chirping. It's so cute. Anyways, sorry. I, I'm distracted easily. So this week I'm thinking of casting on at least one color work hat. Now the pattern that I want to use, I believe it's called the basic Norwegian star hat. And I will put the pattern information down below and a picture up here. It's a very uh, pretty chart that has star, um, a star in the middle and then some just some motifs. And from what I can tell, the pattern uses three colors of one, two, yeah, three colors of yarn. And then Yeah, three colors of yarn. It uses air and weight yarn and it is free. So I thought that those things were awesome just to try out color work knitting and try to get better at it before I try to tackle on something like a sweater. So I went through and I found some Cascade 220. Now I'm thinking of two separate colors uh, color families here that I'm going to try. Now, the first one is going to be blues. Well, blues and black. So I'm thinking of using these three colors. I've got light blue, uh, like a, I don't want to say, like a navy almost, and then black. So I'm thinking that that is going to make one hat. Well, it'll make more than one hat, but for this purpose, it's one hat. And then I have another color family, and this is more browns. So these are the brown colors. I've got like a, a, I don't even know, a brown, 
a brown, and a black. I can't even think of a way to describe these. Do they have color names? No, it says color 862, color 297, and color 1913, so that doesn't help. But I think that those will make pretty hats. Now, I've grabbed these yarn, these six yarn, well, actually it's five yarns because I used the black twice. I've grabbed them and kind of put them in this Hobie tote because I want to... I, I want to make color work hats and I think that it's going to be really good to have just yarns that I can grab out of here and work on color work hats with. And I, since it's Cascade 220, I have more in my sash. So I believe I have a purple and I thought at one time I had a light pink but I might have used it all on things for my daughter so I at least know I have a purple that I can throw in in the mix there but if you saw my New Year's Eve vlog you'll well not New Year's Eve my New Year's goals vlog you'll have you'll know that I had mentioned that I want to get better at color work so pulling that yarn out of stash to kind of put in a bag to just be ready to knit color work hats is basically part of the plan of getting better at color working. So I'm hoping that it works and I guess we'll see. I know that I've knit that basic Norwegian hat pattern before a long, long, long time ago. So I'm hoping that it'll go just as well I'm hoping that it'll go better than it did last time I don't know if I'm going to look into letterback jacquard right away I think I'm just going to knit a couple of hats and kind of get comfortable with just doing basic color work with like three colors and then and then kind of ease myself into it I have the whole year I don't have to do all of the hard difficult techniques at once like I said, it's more of a learn, like a slow learning process and I'm hoping that gradually I'll get better at doing color work and then maybe feel like doing an all over color work sweater or two. But I think that's it for knitting and crochet. I'm going to talk about like just some books that I read recently, some a book that I finished recently anyway and one that I started. And I understand if that's not something you're interested in. So I thank you for stopping by and I'm super happy that you came. And I hope to see you next week. For anyone else that stuck around, I'm glad that you're sticking around. Um, I read The Dark Half by Stephen King and I finished it last week and it's very weird. It is about a writer whose alter, not alter ego, a writer whose persona, I don't even know if I want to say that, a writer who basically dreamed his persona real, almost, it was like his twin, it's very Stephen King weird, Stephen King-ish weird, right? And it was, it was okay, it wasn't my favorite from him. I still, like, I've, I've read some really good books from Stephen King, and this one was okay, but it was, it was okay. I started on Dreamcatcher, which is also by Stephen King, and I like this one a lot more. It's about aliens. Aliens and, I mean, I don't want to say alien fungus that's trying to spread and overtake the earth but it that's pretty much it um it's a good book i like it and i really like how um sometimes stephen king will have like a cluster of characters that are like really complement each other and interact well together and are described really well and this is this is one of the those books that have that so i've been enjoying that it's a pretty long book but i i've blown right through it 
I've been working on my AWS class and I think I'm on like 41% of the first the first time through but it's slow, it's been slow going this weekend mostly because I've been working on this this cat and if you know anything about crocheting amigurumi you know you have to like count and pay attention to each row so I can't just mindlessly knit round and round and stock a net while listening to and perf doing my labs for the class so but as for life stuff things have been pretty pretty normal kids are back in school although last monday they had off and then on wednesday school was canceled because it was too cold outside which is crazy but definitely true because it was freezing and you don't want kids outside waiting if they have to wait for the bus and that's just not not good for anybody especially little kids to be outside so they were happy about that my son was super happy because on friday when he came home he was talking about how he had been nominated to B in the geography B and he was the only kid from his class that was nominated so he was excited about that but because he's because he's 13 I'm trying to remind him you know you should study a little bit for the geography B or at least look at some sample questions you don't want to let down the people who nominated you so I mean he's 13 what can you do he's he's gonna do what he's going to do and Either way, it was his decision, right? My daughter uh, has been asking me for every cat plushie to, to crochet every cat plushie she runs across on the internet. So that's pretty much normal. And we celebrated my kids' birthdays in the last couple of weeks. They're both born in January. And we've finally decided on the days we're going to the hotel water park so that's super exciting it's only a couple of weeks away i will decide what i'm going to be crocheting or knitting on when it gets closer to that because i don't want to say hey i'm going to be working on the bloomsbury kids and then it's done by then or i don't feel like working on it or something more than likely, I'll probably cast on my mom's Irish gold cardigan to work on there because I will have a ton of time to knit because the drive is like an hour and a half one way and an hour and a half back the other way. And then when my kids are in the water park with my husband, I'm basically sitting there in the nice artificial, at least for right now, because it's, 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 freezing in Michigan, but I'll be sitting in the nice artificial warmth of the indoorness of part of the water park. I mean, it's obviously all indoors, but like it's nice and warm there. It feels like a sauna even in the winter time. So that's why we like going so much. It's kind of like, like visiting a nice hot climate, but it's only a couple of hours away. Other than that, work has been great and I'm keeping on keeping on with my AWS class and that's pretty much it. So I thank you guys for stopping by. I hope that you got some fun crafting or crocheting or knitting or cross stitching or anything that you like doing. I hope that this gave you a little bit of time to be able to do that and I hope that I will see you guys next week. Until then, have a great week and take care. Thank you. Bye.